which is the point at work you produce is ready to be presented to a, to a customer or to a service. How would you go about evaluating something like, like this before you put it to a wider audience? So Johannes, I'm so glad you're here. I just wanted to kick off our conversation. I'd love to know what has been some of your favorite content of mine. Um, it could be a course, it could be a specific YouTube video or something you've read. I would just love to hear I've, I've really enjoyed your book, Family First Composer, which was actually, uh, I think, after you know, like I, I got to know you through your, your YouTube channel and then bought your book. And that uh, was kind of like that uh, got me into this, this whole uh, concept um, of like focusing, focusing on uh, giving value, which is something mm. I've, I th think is, uh, yeah, f found pretty unique and like propelled to some of the stuff, uh, some of the stuff I've been, been doing. And then I have I've been getting in uh, to some courses by you, uh, especially this uh, um, uh, composing uh, music for for film, TV, and, and games, and especially the business side of things because it's, mm. which this is something I have not spent that much like uh, time with to that point. So it's just been like great, great to have. Well, that's awesome to hear. Have you noticed any changes in your career as a result of those? It's like I've um, at the moment, like I've, I am working on like transitioning the from like working on on small film film projects for uh, most of all to a game composition, which is like one of the uh, things I wanted to ask you about, like how to um, plan uh, or yeah, how to develop a concrete action plan um, to pulling this kind of transition off. Uh, um, Especially with like leaning more into this this business like content over service um, uh, kind of idea, which you have been been um, promoting. What have you already tried, or what have you considered trying in making that transition? Since you mentioned moving from film into games and trying to make that a full time income, what have you tried? Compositionally, I have um, mostly a background in what you might call classical composition, like a lot of instrumental stuff, working with ensembles, choirs, and mostly. And um, so, like, I have been trying to to like get a hang of the uh, uh, technique, especially the production side of things. Mm. Uh, and which is one of the things, like, I would wanted to ask you, um, which is the point at which you which you at uh, which you might uh, would determine um, that work you produce is ready to be presented to a, to a customer or to a service, because this has been one of the, the points which has like has kept me a little bit hesitant in um, uh, creating something like a podcast or your YouTube channel because I I didn't want to create like the impression that um, like the the content of mixed value. You know that mm -hmm. that w would suggest that one couldn't uh, tell the difference yet. Um, so yeah, this was kind of thing like how would you go about evaluating something like like this before you put it to a wider audience? That's a great question, and that's actually something that I hear almost every day. So you should feel good that you're not alone in that way. Um, the business side is by far the most. Uh, I don't even want to say it's the most challenging, but it's the most elusive. It's the most that feels scary. It's the side that we just don't talk about. And that's really one of the main purposes of this show is to have conversations that are very authentic and real um, here kind of at the start of your career. Um, so the first thing that comes to my mind is whatever you do, whatever you put out into the world, into the marketplace should be valuable. So your question is, okay, then how do I know what that value is. Well, as a game composer, our ultimate goal is to serve game developers. So the goal is to write something, a piece of music that is actually usable in a real game, because that is why they would want to hire you for custom music, or if we're talking about creating game music packs, that's why they'd want to purchase that pack. So the good news, there's kind of a good news and bad news to this. The good news is that far more of your music than not, the majority of your music is sellable. The reason I know that is because you're asking the question. Because that tells me that you care about quality 
and that you are someone who likely already has a lot of quality music that is sellable. I'm a little bit more scared about the people who are not asking because they might put everything out there and exactly what you said, it might be a mixed bag of value. It might, you know, maybe only 10% is really high quality stuff. So at the end of the day, I guess the bad news side would be you can't sell everything. And if you do try to sell really bad stuff, then you're going to have a poor impression on people and it's, it's not going to lead um, to the you know, financial success that you want. So there is certainly a period of time that you have to work on your skills. Um, it's been said m- many times that it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of a skill. And I don't think that's far off. For some people, that might actually be 15 years of mastering something. But for others, I think those who go to school, those who, um, I know in my case, I played piano forever. Like I started when I was a very young kid and um, I played maybe two or three hours a day and I was always writing music. And so in my situation, I was just in love with it. And I would say that I I reached those 10,000 hours way sooner than most, probably in more like five years or so. And, you know, from here, I'm always growing and learning. But I think to answer the question there, there is clearly, it's a subjective thing. And I hate that. I wish that there was just, it has to be this good for it to be uh, sellable. Um, But here's, here's what I find is that most composers are stuck because they're not doing anything about it. They feel paralyzed perhaps by the number of options available out there. Um, They don't know if they should start a YouTube channel or put their stuff on SoundCloud or sell uh, on the Unity Asset Store or whatever. There's there's easily 15 different things you can do with your time as a game composer to try and market, right? Um, But I think the more simple you can be, the more success you're going to have. So my my encouragement is to pick one thing and to do it for six months. There's something about that time frame that is psychologically challenging enough to devote time to, but it's also, you know, it's long enough to get something done and to move the needle in your business, but it's also short enough that if you do change your mind after six months, you really didn't lose anything. You lost a little bit of time, but there's something about that amount of time. What I have found is most composers might try something for a week or they might try something for a month and they get burnt out and they haven't made any momentum. And of course they haven't. They haven't built anything. So obviously it's a large question and it is highly, uh, highly subjective, but if I could give any practical advice, it'd be to set aside six months to do one thing and go 100% into it. And since I sense that you are someone who has quality music because you're asking the question, I would, I would steer you towards game music packs first because that is something that can become passive income. It's something you do once and then it makes you money every month forever as long as it's valuable, right? Take a game pack and turn it into a free lead magnet and now it's doing two jobs at once for you it literally becomes the content that attracts game developers to you, which you can put on YouTube, you can put on social media or on SoundCloud or through email marketing. Like there's five, at least five different ways that you can attract people with this one thing that you made, which is your game music pack. But then of course you can sell it. And people don't even realize that you can also stream it. You could put this through SoundDrop, which is my favorite um, distribution service. And they will connect you to iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon Music, um, Spotify, all all the big guys. And they'll stream your music. But what's so cool about that is no one's licensing that music through streaming and listening. So yes, you're making pennies, but you're making pennies all the time through streaming. You're making dollars, maybe tens of dollars all the time through selling the game music pack. And ultimately, you're creating this big machine that is attracting potential game developers to hire you because they had a good experience. Most composers in the beginning of, the, of their career, they, they feel overwhelmed because they think that they have to do so many different things at once. But in reality, if you just choose one activity that stacks all of these things together, 
such as creating game music packs, it'll actually knock out 80% of the things you want to do anyway. Which uh, site or service would you recommend for selling like a pack first? Because you, you, you talked about a bunch of them on, on your channel. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, this is, which one would, would you recommend to, to like to first? Because you said, if I, if I remember once, uh, that um, it's best to pick one and mm -hmm. uh, and then stick to it in like you just said like go 100 percent into it there are multiple out there but thankfully there are three that if you create the music pack you can literally deliver in the exact same format and have your music in three places at once with literally no extra energy or time or or finances if you want to invest in like artwork um or if you want to pay an assistant to do it or something um the three are Game Dev Market, Unity Asset Store, and itch.io. They're all the same. So what, what it requires, and I've, I've done some tutorial videos on this if you're interested on, on YouTube. But the idea is you create the music pack itself, which can just be a simple zip file with usually 10 or 12 tracks, like an album. And I always sneak in a little readme file, like a little text document that says, hey, thanks for purchasing this. Um, you can, if you want to hire me for custom music, you can go to my website, contact me here. If you want to visit me on social media, you can go here. Um, if you want, you know, here's a link to all of my other music packs. If you're interested, just to kind of connect them to the next step, people always need a next step. All I'm doing is creating a music pack, which is a zip file, throwing it onto these three websites. And what I've done is I have hired one artist, which I really loved. And she created art for all of my music packs at once. I did them all in bulk and I have six music packs and they're all quite different, but they're all underneath my branding. So I have a JRPG battle pack. I have an 8-bit adventure. I have a 16-bit action. So it's it, different genres of games. That way, a specific game developer, it's going to really speak to them because they're going to be able to use all of them, not just one. I found that if you try to do a really big mixture of all the genres, people don't like that because they're only going to use a small percentage and it doesn't make them want to buy it. So I've done these six different packs and I hired an artist to create a widescreen um, custom piece of art that kind of mimics a certain style. So for example, the 16-bit action, I, I hired the artist to create something in almost like Chrono Trigger style because I love Super Nintendo games and that was kind of the vibe. And so I just got that kind of, I, I grabbed a few pieces of box art from the Super Nintendo and I said, can you kind of pick different elements from these and mix them together? And what she gave me was a widescreen image that I could then chop into a square. I could chop it into a vertical slice. And that is the one thing that is different between all the different um, game music pack sites is they all require different sizes of artwork. So as long as you have one master file, you can then chop it up. If you only see the square, then you can see the title and you can see my name. So it, it's a really cool and, and efficient way to create a piece of art that can be used for the game music packs. It can be used on my website. It can be used for the marketing itself. It can be used on social media, but it can also be used for the sound drop, like on Spotify, the album cover art, which is a square. And all of this from one commission to do six pieces of art. So it didn't cost much because it was just one batch action and now I have all these things forever so you have the art you have the zip file which is the music pack and then you just upload it with a description of what's inside and make it sound like it's valuable for people there's really nothing crazy to this process there's there's nothing challenging but I think what stops people is they feel like one of two things they think that the market is so oversaturated that oh no one will ever buy from me of course they won't you don't have music on there um, but that's why you need to pick a genre that really, really stands out. But then the second piece is, I believe you have to have some custom art if you want anyone to see your stuff. It's not expensive. Um, you'll make it back in a month of sales. To me, it's a no-brainer. I, I am a quality person, and if I want a game dev to have a good experience and they see a really cool piece of art that stands out in the sea of a hundred different game packs, of course you want them to click on my, mine, and that's what's going to happen. Um, and then I guess the final piece to this is you have a SoundCloud playlist of all of your tracks. And at the very top, I create a sampler track, which does 10 seconds of every track in the album. 
And that way, when someone visits that page, they, in one sitting of one minute of their time or one minute, 20 seconds, they're going to listen to a 10 second clip of every track that is in the pack. It kind of gives them this preview without having to buy it. And I think a smart game developer would open up their game while playing the track without having to buy it. And they're going to immediately tell, oh, wow, this is amazing for my game. Take the existing existing stuff one, one has or compile it uh, com- according to, to one genre or, or, or style. In terms of production, what would you say? Like, how would you uh, like e- e- evaluate the... Um... The, the production value, you know? The market will decide what is valuable and it may not be the best sounding music. I'm not sure how much you've gotten into production music before. I have a, a past doing TV music where I would write literally hundreds of pieces of, of music. They would be sitting, and they're still today, they're sitting in these libraries. And then because I'm associated with BMI, at least here in the United States, um, that's the performance rights organization that collects royalties every time one of those tracks is used in a TV show anywhere in the world. Sometimes it's pennies, sometimes it could be thousands of dollars. You just never know, depending on the placement. Um, But that type of music, it blew me away every single time. The ones that landed and the ones that continue to land are not the ones I think are the best. And I'm, I'm a professional musician who's been doing production for a very long time. And you know, I have my own gauge as to what would be like a level 10 track versus a level two, right? And time and time again, it has almost nothing to do with the quality of the production. It has everything to do with the appropriateness of the track for the moment. Someone's buying it because they heard something that made them think, oh, wow, that would go so well with this environment in my game. Let's say you have a castle theme and they have a castle environment in their game. You know, there there are a million ways you could write a castle track. So you don't know if they want a slow one or a fast one or if they want it to be a certain instrumentation. But when they hear it, they just know it. And it may not be your best track. But there's just something about if you don't put it out, then you'll never know. At my core, I have to believe if I'm proud of it, If I'm proud of writing music and I want to sell it, just do it. And you're going to know really fast, you know, over the next month or so, you're going to figure out if that was a a good marketplace track or not. But unfortunately, we as composers um, are not great critics of what is viable in the marketplace because we don't think in that language. We think of how creative it is. We think of oh how, how experimental and Oh, did you hear that flute there? Did you hear that? Whatever. But game developers are thinking in terms of emotion. They're thinking thinking in terms of what does this do for my game? It's just a totally different thing. So I don't know if we can know outside of what the marketplace speaks. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to build a business and we want to be creatively fulfilled in the work we do. But ultimately, put your stuff out if you feel good about it. And perhaps you may not feel good about anything you do. Well, um, then I would ask some trusted composer friends. You can certainly ask me. And this is literally the reason that I've created community. Let's listen to each other's music. Let's give feedback. And a lot of times this has already happened where someone posts a track and they're like, I just don't know about this. this." And, And I'll just literally comment on there. And I say, this is perfect. Go sell it. Like, why are you here with this track? It's done. Stop beating yourself up about it. It's good. And I think more often than not, um, our tracks are ready. They just need to be presented in an organized way. And perhaps some of the um, disappointment for anyone that has created a music pack before and it hasn't gone well, it may not be the music. It may just be the way you're packaging it. So try repackaging it until it does sell. What uh, frequency would you recommend aiming for like pack, um, like for, for like a 10 to 12 track pack a month or like or more or less? Put out as many and as quickly as you can at the beginning, because the more you have, the more you're going to be earning as passive income. That, that I think is a personal decision that everyone has to make for me. I spent a lot of time and effort and I even hired a couple people 
to really focus on making those six game packs. There's really only so many different types of sounds that I write. And I think that's very well represented by my six packs. I do a lot of chiptune music, but I also do a lot of live orchestral music. And then in the middle is this hybrid electronic um, orchestral blend. It's a hybrid. And for me to go create a seventh pack, just to be dedicated towards that, it's not a good use of my time because it's not going to earn substantially more. Um, I'm a big believer in the 80-20 principle, which says that 20% of your effort yields 80% results. If you've never put out a music pack, then you are missing out on all of the opportunity. You're not in the game. But once you've put out maybe five or six game packs, by adding one more, it's a lot of effort for a very small diminishing returns. It's the same thing with releasing albums. I've released a lot of albums, but there just comes a point I've noticed I only make like 5% more income when I put a new album out, but I put a lot of work into that album versus the first one was here, second one was here, third one was here, everyone hits a peak. It ultimately just depends on your long-term goals of what, what you want your business to be. I believe you should spend 80% of your time at the beginning of your career creating passive income. And then once you've hit a certain threshold, whatever that is for you, maybe it's a thousand bucks a month, maybe it's 5,000 a month, whatever that comfort level is for you, what number do I need financially to support my family? Or what do I need to quit my day job? What do I need to be full-time composer? That's, that was the number for me. And I think it was 4,000 a month. And so once I hit that number with passive income streams, there is like this underlying piece that now I can be risky. Now I can really pour my time and energy, the 80% into pursuing custom gigs and working on custom music because I know that it's a roller coaster. Some months you get a ton of pay and then the next month can be a complete desert. But what's so neat is when you have that underlying passive income, which comes from all these different things, game music packs. I do a lot of education, obviously, with book and with uh, courses, with YouTube. It just, it all adds up. And I, I've preached on this a bunch, but I have about 15 to 20 income sources from music, which kind of blows my mind. But it's, there. I could literally stop working and I'd be fine. My family would be fine. But the reason I work this kind of goes full circle back to the whole reason we even have this conversation. The reason that I work is because number one, I love it. I love what I get to do. And number two, because it allows me to build more wealth to then bless people and to give to the, the causes and the, the initiatives and, and for me, ministries that, that are my why. And that's, you know, we talked about it at the beginning, right? There it is, right? <laughs> it's, it's my why. It's why I make money. It's why I work. And it fuels me every day on days that I do not want to work. It still makes me want to work. Like as a next step, if okay, if okay say, um, yeah, we put out set sets five to six packs focused on, on a specific, specific genre. And let's say they are selling. So then would you say, uh, focus on a different venture, uh, starting like starting up a, a podcast or a YouTube channel or something educational? Or what would you like recommend doing? I believe in building pillars for your business. And so let's think of a, a foundation of a building. If we're talking construction, there's four pillars or there's four walls, right? There's the, you start with the foundation first and then you can fill in the middle with what you really want to do. So if we're talking about business, get the pillars in place. It might take you a year. It might take you five years just depends on how much time and energy you're putting into it. And there is always a small portion of luck, but I don't even define luck as things happening to you. I define luck as preparation. Like you have been prepared for the opportunity and then when the opportunity arises, you jump at it because you're ready for it. Um, and those pillars for me are passive income. The pillars for me are having enough savings in the bank that if everything, let's talk about COVID, right? I mean... <laughs> That has completely changed lives of so many, but I'm very grateful that because of savings and because of passive income, 
this has been a very strange season for me because family members and friends and, and people are always asking, okay, how's your family doing during this time? And I'm like, we're doing amazing. Like we are thriving. I know that people are really having a hard time around us. And that's my heart is to help the people around me that are not doing great. Um, but the reason my business is thriving and my family is thriving in the midst of what should be chaos, it's because we've done the hard work. We've, we have pillars. So those pillars would be, again, passive income. It's having savings. And it's having a, maybe three and four would be having a marketing machine that is on autopilot. It doesn't mean I just walk away. But what it means is I have something in place that is always bringing me more customers and always bringing more sales. It's all about creating content marketing. For some people, that's a YouTube channel. For some people, that's a podcast. I do both. For some people, that is a live show. I do that as well. That's kind of a fifth pillar because it makes it a really strong building. You know, The more pillars, the stronger your business is. Um, and you can even go further by hiring a team. I have a team because I can't do it all myself. And it's, it fluctuates how many people are, are working with me. But I've, I've created a system that allows my business to thrive in a way that I could literally just stop working and everything's fine. I could stop working on a current project and hand the keys over to one of my assistants and it'd be fine. I can have a family emergency. I can stop everything I'm doing. I can reshuffle my schedule because I built that first. It doesn't mean you have to build it at all. And a lot of composers don't. And when, when calamity strikes, they have a hard time. They have to rebuild it all because they had no foundation. So there is no magic time frame, but I will say that there is an average. The average time frame is three to five years. That's just kind of historically accurate based on thousands of composers I've talked to now over the years. It, it takes about that long to make that full transition to build and to invest in those avenues because a YouTube channel will not make you money for a while. A podcast won't either. A book won't. A course won't. There is no quick money, money, money. It's let me put something extremely valuable out into the world, like a game music pack that we just talked about forever. And it's not going to make money immediately, but if it's valuable and you have all of these little machines running, then it's going to lift the entire business because you never know when someone takes your course and now they want to buy music from you. You never know when they buy your game music pack and now they want to hire you for their game or they listen to the podcast and like there's so much cross-pollination that the more avenues you have, the more systems, the more pillars, the whole thing rises together and it just creates a much more stable and sustainable income for your family. And that's what I'm all about. And that's why we, we do all of this. So Johannes, thank you so much for, for being here today. Hope that this was uh, really valuable for you and great questions. Thank you for just being open and honest. And I know that um, it's going to help a lot of other composers as well. That's all the time we have for today, but I appreciate you and hope you have a good one. Thank you very much. So for your time, thanks for having me. Have a nice day and uh, hope to talk to you sometime. Thank you so much.